in this section we will see the extraction of iron in compression corner so for extraction of iron uh, we require different type of ore that we have studied earlier like magnetite ores uh, uh, hematite ores hematite ores is actually red in color uh, limonite ores or these ores are brown in color brown hematites so these are the ores normally utilized in uh, for uh, extraction of iron from their ores so what are the steps of extraction we will see one by one uh, for the iron so first we know that the concentration of ore so generally uh, the ores are crushed and washed with water to remove siliceous impurities or earthy impurities then this washed ore is dressed by the magnetic separation that we have seen it next after this the second step is calcination and roasting so in calcination and roasting as we know this is calcination take place in absence of air and roasting take place in presence of air since ores contain so many different type of ores see this fe2o3 so it will uh, uh, this is your hydrated ore so on heating calcination this will becomes iron oxide plus water similarly feco3 will give you iron oxide plus co2 and then again feo will uh, combine with oxygen and they will give uh, come, uh, they will oxidize, oxidize to fe2o3 impurities such as uh, phosphorus sulfur carbon like these are removed as a volatile oxides how we can see sulfur plus oxygen it becomes so2 arsenic plus oxygen it will becomes arsenic oxide so now after this one this entire mass means iron ore this is escaping from this iron ore so this uh, on escaping this ores uh, bec becomes like a sponge iron so uh, now this iron is very easy to undergo reduction process so we can easily remove this from this iron oxygen from this sponge iron now next process so this sponge iron we are is uh, there so the sponge iron next process is called smelting so here again uh, uh, calcined ores, limestones, limestones means calcium carbonate or this is acting as a flux or coke uh, or is acting as a reductant. So this whole material is called as charge. This charge is sent to blast furnace from top cone, uh, top cone of blast furnace. Okay. So this we are uh, so putting inside the blast furnace. So in blast furnace there are different type of temperatures different type of temperatures and different reactions in different type of zones. So we will see each zone one by one. So first zone is called as reduction zone. So in this we can see here reduction zones uppermost portion here temperature range is very uppermost. So here temperature range is 250 to 7 degrees centigrade very less. So that's why this is called as dull red heat. Here what happens since sponge iron we are sponge iron is nothing but the SP Fe2O3. So this will get uh, so reduced by carbon monoxide in temperature 300 to 400 centigrade so it will becomes fe3o4 plus carbon dioxide released again fe3o4 is again reduced by carbon monoxide at higher temperature feo plus co2 and again feo react with the co and this will give you at 700 centigrade a sponge iron plus co2 this is sponge iron normally then again co plus sponge iron this will give you co2 plus carbon so this is happening at temperature 700 centigrade so this is the one part of the portion reduction so now after this one next next pass next part part is uh, slag formation zone next zone is so this is called like uh, uh, central portion so it is again 800 to 1000 degree centigrade so this is bright red in color here what happens calcium carbonate on 1000 degree centigrade so it will come uh, uh, cao plus carbon monoxide similarly sio2 it becomes a fusible slag Magnesium oxide, magnesium uh, phosphorus oxide, phosphorus P4O10, calcium phosphate. If this calcium phosphate and plus calcium silicate, both together is called as thomas slag. So this we are getting in slag formation zone. And I, we have earlier discussed that this is used for making fertilizers and uh, road making like this thing. So again, silicon oxide plus carbon silicon like this arsenic again react with the oxygen plus carbon. So they will be respective oxides or so arsenic carbides again next portion is your combustion zone so in this combustion zone low this is lowest portion so again this lowest portion the temperature is 1500 to 1600 centigrade and this is the temperature this is look like a white heat above the hearth just above the hearth so here what happens carbon again uh, combined with the oxygen because we are supplying oxygen through the uh, blast through the pores 
which is side which is uh, along the side of the wall surface so from that hose oxygen will come out air will come out and combine with the uh, carbon they will form carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so both the reactions are exothermic in reaction now again carbon dioxide uh, react with the carbon these carbons are very red actually this coke is there so this is in red in color very red hot so again they will combine with 800 to 1000 centigrade just above this combustion zone and they will form carbon monoxide this is lighter so at this temperature carbon monoxide form this will go up uh, go up means top portion portion top portion of the blast furnace well they will combine with the fe2o3 fe3o4 that we have seen in the uh, portion one now next is your zone of fusion so this is just above the lower most portion lower most portion this is this is just above first one we have seen then second one this third one this is fourth one so here what happens this temperature is 1200 to 1500 centigrade so in this zone this sponge iron sponge iron drop down after the reduction in uppermost pore of the furnace and it melts at 1300 centigrade and collapses at the bottom of the hearth while slags big lighter floats over molten iron now we'll see the actually in shortcut the flow chart of the iron ore that we have discussed crude iron ore we have taken so this will become concentrated iron this process called as concentration after concentrated iron we have seen this is converted into roasted iron ore so here moisture carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide arsenic sulfide these are removed arsenic oxide is removed iron oxide will be oxidized to fe2 fe2 or 3 so again they will reduced by the carbon monoxide which will come through the lower from the when carbon monoxide react with the carbon so they will reduce it after roasted ore this is so it will become say pig iron so on becoming pig iron on becoming pig iron so the, this ore is heated with the coke and limestone in a smelting process this pig iron consists of 93% of iron and 5% of carbon plus these impurities like silica magnesium phosphorus etc so pig iron is required purification so on purification we will get two type of iron one is called cast this is called pig iron cast iron so this cast iron is two type of uh, two type of cast iron one is white cast iron and second is your gray cast iron what is white cast iron white cast iron is actually uh, molten pig iron cooled suddenly if it is cooled suddenly then it is become a white cast iron if it is cooled slowly then same cast iron is called as the gray cast iron again this cast iron is used for building making uh, buildings bridge bridge making steels and from cast iron so we can convert into wrought iron so this cast iron still contains some uh, 3 to 4% carbon so we have to purify more again and after this one this become a wrought iron that wrought iron still contains some carbon 0.1 to 0.15 percentage of impurities is still there but this is the purest form of the iron so after this we can see from this diagram so next is the diagram of the blast furnace that we discussed this is the top portion of the hopper cone uh, so where we can uh, so putting charge or the charge means or limestone is added and this is going downwards we can see different type of temperature over here so this is the hot air which is coming outside so this is your 200 centigrade second your this 600 temperature this is third part this is a 30 so it, this temperature is increasing so in this increasing the height is 25 to 60 meter blast furnace so in this temperature increasing so this is very big here is the compressed air we are passing this is blast of air we are passing so on this temperature first reaction goes carbon mono first is carbon monoxide form here this will go up this will separate this oxygen this oxygen from the iron oxides here oxygen from the fe3 or 4 then again if it will remove oxygen from the iron oxides and they'll form respective iron this, is, this becomes sponge iron and with the simultaneously they will combine with the impurities uh, by the flux and they will form here a zone slag slag this is slag and uh, molten iron so molten iron is heavier than slag slag will be uh, filter filtered out or separated out through a slope inclined slope and molten iron is separated from here so in this way we will getting the uh, pig iron so this is molten iron, nothing but the pig iron now extraction of aluminum so extraction of aluminum uh, we are here we are taking main uh, ores that is called bauxite al2o3 uh, twice molecular water so here we have three process one is beer's process hall's process and surpex process because uh, here uh, bauxite contains different type of impurities based on impurities process are very very different generally bauxite contains two type of impurities one is uh, iron 
oxide impurities and second is your silicon oxide impurities so these impurities should be removed because it will makes the iron uh, so it will makes the bauxite brittle so this it will make the bauxite brittle so it must be removed now if the if the bauxite contains more iron impurities if the bauxite contains more iron impurities it becomes a red in color so this iron uh, bauxite is first roasted uh, first roasted so in our own roasting what happens fe or this impurity become iron oxides okay and this bauxite roasted so this is changed into another uh, plus 2 iron is changed to plus 3 iron again this bauxite uh, roasted bauxite is uh, react with the naos solution so this is a 45 percent here percentage of the ca this one iron is present in the bauxite is something 7 to 10 percent while silica is one percent very less persons so after removal of this uh, ox impurities again reacted with the naoh so what will happen naoh react with the only uh, so fe2o3 this one sorry al2o3 and they will become a soluble solution of sodium meta sulfide and remaining impurity that is uh, iron impurities and silica impurities will remain behind so uh, remain behind in the solution after filtration of this solution so this will undergo hydrolysis in presence of little ammonium hydroxide why little ammonium hydroxide so this will help in uh, making a hydrolysis of sodium alum meta aluminate more easy so we will get more and more uh, ammonium or hydroxide as a precipitate plus sodium hydroxide solutions so this we are again regaining so after uh, filtered this uh, ammonium hydroxide we dried it and on heating 1500 centigrade we get ammonium hydroxide so this will go for purifications there is another process that is called Hall's process. So in Hall's process, it is used for the low grade of bauxite ores. So again, bauxite ores is fused with the sodium carbonate, so they will become sodium aluminates. Okay. So in this, what happens? Um, iron oxides and silicon oxides is left behind. Again, this sodium meta aluminate is uh, extracted with water, so they are making solutions on heating. Uh, this solution at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade plus carbon dioxide pass so what will happens in this uh, uh, passing co2 so they will combine with the NaAlO2 and they will form sodium carbonate and ammonium hydroxide is precipitated so this is again uh, filtered washed and dried again this is ignited like the previous process to get the alumina al 3 now third process is your surpex process so surpex process means here again this is called as white alumina uh, red is that uh, bauxite two type one is red bauxite uh, next is white bauxite why white oxide because they contain rich in silica oxide and less percentage iron oxide seven percent silica oxide is present in this bauxite or white bauxite again this is react with the coke and air air contains nitrogen at temperature 1800 degrees centigrade or uh, in this temperature what happens aluminium they form aluminium nitride plus carbon monoxide again this is react with the uh, in hot waters in hot water this will hydrolyze to aluminium hydroxide and ammonia ammonia is really as a byproduct and we get the precipitate and again same precipitate so we heating on heating we will get aluminium oxide so and then again in this what happened to impurities impurities react with the carbon with coke and they will form silica plus carbon monoxide as a volatile impurities and they will separate out now next process is your calcination so after getting uh, so alumina that is aluminium hydroxide on heating 15 centigrade we will get anhydrous alumina that we have seen it earlier so we will move to next process that is called electrolytic reduction so this process is called as hall herald process so here what happens electrolyte aluminium oxide is dissolved into a uh, some fusion mixture so this fusion mixture is sodium aluminium chloride plus calcium fluoride caf2 that we have seen it so in this mixture aluminium oxide becomes very good conductor of electricity and after and we can use the carbon to separate the oxygen from the aluminium see here so there is a huge apparatus that we have seen in previous uh, topics also uh, so here at carbon at cathode uh, what happens uh, uh, at cathode what happens uh, you can see here uh, cathode this one and anode this one so both are made up of graph graphite rods so aluminium oxides on electrolysis of 950 centigrade after using a fusion mixture they will give you aluminium 99.8 percent pure and oxygen so we can see this reaction this is the formula of uh, uh, cryolite so they will 
सो बिकम ए वेरी गुड कंडक्टेंस डी एल थ्री प्लस एन थ्री सोडियम प्लस सिक्स फ्लोराइड सो एट कट एट कैथोड मीस कार्बन लाइनिंग हॉट एपेंस देर विल रिडक्शन टेक प्लेस अलमोनियम बिकम्स ए एल सो हेयर नाइन टेन परसेंट अलमोनियम इज ऑप्टेन एंड वाइल एट एनोड फ्लोराइड आयंस विल गिव यू फ्लोइन प्लस सो हेयर ऑक्सीजन विल टेक प्लेस सो अगेन अलमिना इन द सोल्यूशन विल रिएक्ट विद द फ्लोरिन दे विल गिव यू अलमोनियम फ्लोराइड एंड ऑक्सीजन इज देयर सो अगेन कार्बन रिएक्ट विद दिस ऑक्सीजन सो दे कैन फॉर्म कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड कार्बन मोनऑक्साइड so after this alumina which is 99.9% pure so we can make more pure pure we can make more pure so by this we have to do electrolytic metallurgy that is called electrolytic refining by hoops process so hoops process again contains three layers which is differ in a specific gravity so each layer is differ in a specific gravity so here i am lying is writing some examples how these layers are uh, separated in three different zones one is upper layer second is middle layer third is lower layer upper layer is normally cathode uh, lower layer is normally anode so this is here contains impure aluminum and middle layer uh, c is filled with aluminum barium and sodium fluorides okay so what happens here uh, during electrolysis pure aluminum is deposited at the cathode from the middle layer and at the same time at the same time an equivalent amount of aluminum is transferred to the middle layer from the lowest layer containing impure aluminum so impure so sorry sorry uh, pure aluminum is lighter in density and impure aluminum is denser in density so here i have drawn one diagram so we, here you can understand this thing very clearly so there are three layer this layer this layer this layer so this layer is pure aluminum which is nothing but the cathode and lowest impure lowest layer is your impure aluminum so this is your anode So here we are supplying impure aluminium. So what will happen? So this is your middle layer which contains aluminium, barium, and sodium hydroxide. So here some part of the uh, aluminium will go to the cathode layer due to the reduction. And uh, to uh, make up that loss of uh, aluminium, there is some part of the impure aluminium is goes to middle. So in this process is going on from here to here, from here to here. And to uh, cover this gap, we are supplying impure aluminium from the outside. And in this way, we will get the aluminium as a. pure